About 18 okay. months ago, his doctors came up with a form of treatment that appears to be helping slow the disease. Notice it's not cure. It's just slow. So he's still going to die, just more slowly. Okay. However, my dad does not want to be on this treatment. Free choice. I know he feels this way because I take him to all his appointments. And in our waiting room discussions, he's been very clear that he thinks the treatments are a waste of time and that he is ready to be with Jesus. Oh. Yeah, huh? Okay. I mean, it's like, God bless you too, right? Like, there's some some wisdom. So what what kind of tyranny has put him in a place where he's still going? That's, the, you know, what kind of religious control system that's not his religion, but which he's been subjected to is at work here? That That's where this is interesting to me. So uh, Matt goes on, I'm the only one of the family that isn't sure these treatments are the best thing for him. That is, the rest of the family thinks he has to do it. Dad is in his 90s, and in the past year, he has become essentially homebound, and his memory is starting to fade. Hmm. I tried to talk with some of my brothers and sisters about this a few months ago, but they all got upset and said I was just being selfish because I have to put in a little work. Now, I'm just going to say they always accuse you of what they're doing. The, the sooner you realize that, the, the less their words will be able to break your boundaries. They accuse you of what they're doing. Who's being selfish? You're talking about what dad wants. That's very selfish of you. Okay. Like, you know, I, I don't want to start a fight in your family, but there's already a fight in your family. I'm just saying it's there. And um, liars lie to themselves first. He says, I live the closest of my siblings to mom and dad. So a lot of the helping does fall to me. And while I can admit being a caregiver in this situation is at times a bit more than I can handle. I really don't think it has anything to do with me thinking continuing this treatment may not be the best for him. I'm just not sure that making him feel pressured into treatments he doesn't want to do for the sake of keeping him home rocking in the lazy boy is a very good idea. Am I wrong to feel this way? No, you're not wrong. You're not even a little bit wrong. You're so very right. <laughs> uh, if not, uh, do you or Meredith have any advice for going into these discussions that won't make all my family mad at me? And no, I don't. Um, you're going to make them mad at you. You're going to make them mad at you because uh, they are living in a world where people don't die somehow. Somehow they've come up with this this idea that... Um, or they're living in a world where living as long as possible, no matter what, is the highest virtue. Mm-hmm. And your dad's living in the same world so far as the controls around him go, but he's realized it's not much of a virtue. It's actually kind of a curse. Mm-hmm. And Christianity teaches us this. It's there. It's there to be known. But the movement of our society over the last 40 or 50 years has really compelled us. Uh, mass formation psychosis is one of those political words that I'm not supposed to talk about, but you know, hypnotism, um, group hypnotism, we are compelled to believe that this is the only option that we have. So um, I don't think I'm going to talk out of school by saying I have an uncle uh, who is a farmer, a smoker. Oh man, is he a smoker? Um, and, uh, missing most of his teeth, uh, in his seventies and, uh, a d- d- diabetic, his blood sugar was like it. 600. 600. Okay. So, so he, and, and God bless the man. He was driving a tractor and he got hit by a car thrown from the tractor. And now he can no longer do the one thing he loves, which is working on a farm. He's in a hospital, um, being cared for for a broken back and a bunch of other stuff. And and he said, I was in the ditch. They could have just left me there. Another few minutes. Mm. Another few minutes. Now, he said this to my mom. Maybe he hasn't said this to his kids. And, and now that you're kind of back in the hospital, like you can't die. Like, it just you know, they, they got you. They saved you. But like, there's some wisdom in what he said. Like at a certain point, it's like, well, that was that was it. I was I was out. <laughs> I was gone. Why'd you bring me back um, to do to lose everything that I loved? Right. Again, now he's got grandkids that he loves. They're going to see him. He loves his daughters. You know. So don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not trying to talk out of school. Um, but the wisdom of his insight, like like 
if I'm having a heart, Meredith, if I'm past 60 and having a heart attack, unless I say, please call the I might, maybe I'll say call somebody, right? Okay. But if I don't say call somebody and you just, you come in and you just see me and I'm just lying on the ground, like, kiss me goodbye. No, because I. Well, and then, I mean, there's another scenario that we just recently learned about where an elderly couple, um, the husband has mm. dementia, Parkinson's, and um, the yeah, wife right. has been caring for him. And one night woke up, he woke up got left the home had nothing on because he forgot or didn't realize what was real and what wasn't he went out to die and he went away yeah. he went and wandered until two in the morning came home and was just not really cognitively there um but in in so then 911 was called and now they're separated mm -hmm. yeah they and cannot he's, he's be in the facility together he where cannot he's, come home yep and yep. she's only allowed to visit on the facility's schedule. Like, mm -hmm. if it's a bad day for him, she does. She gets a phone call. You can't come today. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's her best friend. So it's it's rough. Our our decision to just hang on. So it's kind of like us. The ones who will be left behind are the ones who need to check our selfishness and realize, like. No, really, it's okay to say goodbye, Alvita Zane, until we meet again. It's okay to allow Christ's hand to be in it. That's really key. It's okay to say goodbye. So uh, advice for the conversation with your family. Um, I think uh, the most important thing to do would be to have your, your dad call the other kids and just say, I'm stopping treatments. Mm -hmm. Because unless he's signed over to all of you legal power wherein he no longer has legal power like he can quit anytime he wants he just has to say i'm quitting and then you call your siblings and be like dad won't go dad says he won't go i can't do anything about it i respect dad why are you being selfish <laughs> you know and maybe don't say that part right but in your head like just listen for that and listen for the selfishness and then overlook it, let it be and say, you need to talk to dad. It's his dad's call. It's his life. He can do what he wants. I think if I were um, in that scenario, I'm 90 years old. I'm starting to lose my, my mental faculties. I think I might enjoy going to an ice cream parlor once a week instead of sitting in the waiting room of a hospital or doctor's office Golly. and uh, having him poke me. Talk about an ugly church, <laughs> you know, yeah. Or even that, like, can you just take me to my church so I can pray quietly in hmm. the pew? Hmm. Churches aren't open for that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I want to talk about just a couple of texts that might encourage you as you talk with your dad. Uh, Philippians chapter one, verse 23. We looked at this one last week as well. Um, he says, I am hard pressed between the two that is whether to live or die, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, mm -hmm. which is better by far. So uh, his point in the text is that it's good to be alive. And if God wants you to remain, you will remain alive. Uh, but the fact is that dying releases you from your sin. You rest in Christ until the last day. And this is better by far, by far. Yeah. Uh, so we also uh, have here, this is, did I just not get there? Oh, here we go. Uh, Psalm 116, uh, verse 15. This one everyone should just know off the top of their head. Not where it's from, but you should know this line. You can remember this line. You can you can say it one time and you'll never forget it. Preci precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Yeah. Precious in the sight of Jesus is when Christians die. It's not something to avoid at all costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you should try it? No, no, don't. I mean, actually, well, run toward the tomb is, is a fair bit of philosophy, but... Um, it's not as though medical care is evil or like somebody's choking at the table. You don't throw them over the throw chair. Over the chair. <laughs> I don't know if we've told that story <laughs> enough for other people to laugh at it, but you know, the Heimlich <laughs> maneuver one way or the other. Um, but uh, to recognize that if someone dies in Christ, this is glory. And, and we, we really, really have lost, um, lost that. <laughs> 